hi. Um, I've just been chatting to the camera for five minutes and realised I hadn't pressed record. That's a good start, isn't it? back to my channel if you've been here before. If you haven't, I'm Gemma, I talk about books and this is my March wrap up. The first book I read in March was The Dead Zone by Stephen King and I really really enjoyed this. So this book is about John Smith who as a child has an accident and is not unconscious and then years later as an adult is involved in a horrific car accident and ends up in a coma for about four and a half years I think it was and when he wakes up things are different. Things were slightly different after his accident as a child. After his accident as an adult Things are never the same again for John Smith and we, we follow him through him waking up from his coma, recovering from horrific injuries and actually the scenes of him in the hospital are they're pretty harrowing and I have to say Stephen King does a really brilliant job of sort of creating that atmosphere of being in hospital and aware of the just the variety of emotions you go through and it's everything from boredom and frustration to being in horrendous agony and pain to anxiety and worrying not only about yourself but about your loved ones and what they've been through to have been in a coma, I think, just, you know, multiplies that by, you know, pick a number, any number, and I don't think you come close. The other thing is how King actually explains what the dead zone is. I'm not going to explain what it is, I think it's something you have to actually read the book to find out. But it creates tension, it creates this kind of anxiety while you're reading it. Just this kind of overwhelming sense that something isn't quite right and it's not necessarily to do with the injuries that occurred from either of the accidents. The other thing I really love about this book is it's, it's, it's really a book of its time. There are references throughout this book that really take the reader to when it was set. Some books are all about the place and having you in that environment and that location. This is all about the time. So there are references to pop culture, music, film, TV, all sorts of things, but it's also really really heavy on what was going in, on in the world and in America historically and politically at that time. And if you're somebody like me who wasn't born when this book is set and it was written it's really interesting to get that sort of view now and that I think is really made clear by the other main character that's in this story who is Greg Stilson and he is a political figure he's really heavily involved in politics and it's not because he wants to make things better for everybody, for society. It is purely for his own benefit. He wants the power. He wants the 
societal standing. He, you know, he wants to be on that pedestal. But he is a nasty piece of work. He is the villain of this story. And the two characters meet. Their paths cross, their worlds collide, and it ends. I don't know if I would say the ending was obvious or whether I would just say there was there was only going to be one resolution for these two characters. I really really enjoyed this story. Um, I knew nothing about it going in as well so I went in completely blind and just got swept up in these characters and yeah there wasn't there wasn't a single moment where I was like I just don't care what's happening it it's not thrilling all the way through but it definitely keeps you hooked and I think they are just really well written believable characters that you you follow and you not necessarily get invested in but I think you just need to know how it's all going to come to a conclusion. So the next book I read in March was Murder at Number 4 Euston Square by Sinclair McKay. This is a historical true crime so this is set in uh, 1879. The body of a decomposing um, woman is found in the coal cellar of a boarding house where she used to live and it's believed by everybody that she had just moved out and left until her body turns up and then it's a question of how long has she been there how did she get there who put her there what happened and all these other questions start coming up i was really intrigued by this i love a bit of historical dream true crime i love things set in victorian times i was fully on board with reading this. Um, I found the, the writing quite dry and repetitive. I didn't really care for any of the people involved and there were some who their names would crop up and I would lose track of who they were and I would have to remind myself of how they were related to various other people and how they you know, were involved in the story and it just didn't keep my interest and um, without giving anything away if you're interested in this case in particular just go on to google just you know there's a wikipedia page by the end i really didn't care who had done what and it's a really unsatisfying ending as well and I came away just kind of like, I feel like I've really wasted my time. And I could have quite easily DNF this. And I didn't. And I feel stupid. Because I carried on reading and it's over 300 pages. The next book I read was Splinter the Silence by Val McDermid. So this is book nine in the Tony Hill Carol Jordan series. Which... If you've been watching any of my previous videos, you will know I love this series. I've been loving it. Book seven was not great, in my opinion, but we started going upwards again in a good direction. And we're continuing in this book. So... Um, I'm going to try not to give too many spoilers, but 
all our main characters are talking. Everybody is back working in the police. Things are still happening in their private lives, which keep messing up their careers and messing up their personal lives and relationships and goodness knows what else. But we are back in serial killer territory, following our detectives as they solve a mystery. So a number of women who are fairly well known and have been very public and open about criticising men and their misogynistic uh, views and opinions and things that they do. Um, they've been really vocal sort of online and on TV and in papers and then these women are just completely randomly uh, committing suicide. Or so everybody thinks. Obviously they're not committing suicide um, because otherwise there wouldn't be a story. So it's our detectives following the trail of a serial killer who is targeting really specific women in a really specific way and making their deaths look like suicide. I enjoyed this book and so for me I just like it when we've just got a straight out murder to solve, there's a criminal on the loose and the detectives have got to catch them. And this one's a good one. You know we've got Val McDermid who she's a great writer. She's been writing now for such a long time but she is still able to bring all of her books and all of her characters fully up to date. So we've got social media involved, we, you know, they're, everyone's fully online, there's trolling, there's, you know, everything that comes with modern society, the good and the bad. The next book in March was We Have Always Lived in Castle by Shirley Jackson. Now if you watched my January wrap up I read The Haunting of Hill House and I didn't love that one. It's a really well known book, it's a really well loved book but I just didn't get on with it. This one I thought was a lot better. I liked it. I didn't love it but I definitely vibed with the, the characters more, the atmosphere. I thought there was, there was a little bit of a mystery involved, although I don't think it takes a huge amount of sort of thinking about. I think it's quite obvious as you read sort of what the the twist is, because um, I don't think it's much of a twist really. But this book we are following Mary Catherine, or Mary Cat as she's known, and her sister Constance and they live with their uncle Julius in a house at the edge of a village and they're, they're really sort of pariahs where they live. Something happened years before the events in this book and the villagers hate them for it. They're bullied and they're victimised and they're taunted and they're harassed by the people around them. And so the the family, the three of them, stay locked in their houses. Mary Cat is the only one who goes out. She goes out once a week to do the shopping, grocery shopping, and that's it. And the other two don't go out at all. And we find out that Uncle Julian is actually very unwell. And Constance, she is actually the one that everybody thinks did the thing that happened years previously. I'm not actually going to say what happened, what it was that happened years before. Um, but what does happen is a mysterious man turns up at the house 
who turns out to be a sort of long lost relative. But actually, the big question is, you know, is he friend or foe? Is he there for genuinely honest reasons, as he claims, or is he up to no good? What does he know about what happened? What is he going to do to their family? And yeah, I really, I actually really liked this. I thought it was a lot more am atmospheric. The characters, the characters are, are unusual because you've got Constance who everybody thinks is this sort of really evil character and yet because it's told from Mary Cat's perspective and she loves her older sister and she she's incredibly protective they're, they're very protective of each other so you kind of have a distorted view of what Constance is actually like um, and Mary Cat is, she's unusual because she's, she's a young woman, but she acts like a teenager. It's obviously connected to this past event, but you just end up with a really re unreliable take on whether or not she is a, a good character, or whether she's done something horrendous or why just why the car why they don't go out why why the villagers hate them so much and it's it's interesting it's what i would deem as being a proper gothic novel as i say i didn't love it i liked it i enjoyed it i i would probably read it again and out of all of her writings so far, this is probably the one that I would recommend to other people. And then we have what I would probably say was my favourite book of the month, and that is The Hunted by Gabriel Bergmoser. And I'm just going to... That cover is brilliant, I love it! Um, so th this book, we have multiple POVs and we have multiple timelines, but it's really, it's a thriller. This is a proper dramatic thriller. I can completely see this being made into a TV show or a, or a film or something because it's it's written in such a cinematic way. I just really love the fact that actually it was set in Australia. Having a book set in the Australian Outback is a completely different setting to anything you've probably read before. It's It's got that desolate, isolated landscape, the, the people, it's it starts off as a bit of a you, it's a bit of a slow burn to start with. You have an I have a character called Frank who runs a service station, and it's literally in the middle of nowhere. He's lucky if he gets a customer a day. So you kind of think, well, you know, hardly anything's going to happen then. But the when stuff starts happening oh my god, that's it, and it doesn't stop. Nothing lets up until the end, till the very last page. So full on, it's it's gripping, It's it twists, there, there are twists all over the place. Um, it's really gory, <laughs> it's quite gruesome, actually it's very gruesome, uh, really quite violent, and it's definitely not for you if you've got a bit of a weak stomach and a sensitive disposition, let's put it that way. But I absolutely loved it. So, as I say, we've got Frank, who has his granddaughter staying with him. Then in another period, we have got Simon, who's kind of just on a sort of gap year, driving around 
doing what he wants. And then we have a woman called Maggie, who her life is in serious danger. She has pissed off some people and they want her dead. That's it. There's no two ways about it. And their stories cross quite dramatically. And when they do, everybody is in trouble. And it's brilliant. The last book that I read in March, I have actually lost my copy of. I put it down somewhere and I don't know where it is now. So if I can work out how to do the clever thing of putting an image somewhere, hopefully it will be here. But the last book I read was Cape Fear by John MacDonald. And if I'm completely honest, it was also the most disappointing book that I read. It's really short. I can't remember off the top of my head how many pages it is, but it took me four days to read it. It didn't help the fact that I had a stinking cold at the time, but it was just so unbelievably boring. So there have been two film adaptations about on this book. One starring Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum, and another one from the early 90s, which had Nick Nolte and Robert De Niro. I've seen the second one, I haven't seen the first one, so I can't say anything about that, as to how much the book is like the film, or vice versa. However, if you have seen the version with Robert De Niro, and you're thinking, oh I'll read the book, it'll be great. It's not. It's boring. So we have Sam, who is retired from the army. Um, and while he was in the army, he helped to put Max Cady in prison for raping a 14 year old girl. And so Katie goes away for prison, uh, to prison for, I think it's about 14 years. And when he comes out, he's not happy. He wants revenge. And he tracks Sam down. He's married, he's got kids. And Katie finds them. And basically lets Sam know that he you know, wants him dead, pretty much. But the thing is, the entire book is pretty much told from Sam's perspective. It is all about his, his sort of paranoia and the fact that he is absolutely convinced that this man is after him and is gonna get him. Which is pretty accurate. A couple of things happen and you think, you know, this guy is an absolute lunatic, he's violent, he's out for revenge, there is absolutely nothing this family can do to stop him. The problem is, there is, ab there is absolutely no atmosphere to this book at all. The supposed dramatic scenes just aren't dramatic, they're boring. It's written in a very, this happens, this happens, this happens. That's it. It's just kind of a list of events that have happened. But there's no feeling of sort of peril or um, making the reader feel, you know, anxious or concerned for these people. It's, it's all just very dull. I have to say, I did not care for any of the characters at all. And I just wanted the character of Max Cady to be more scary. I wanted him more in the book. 
you know, I kind of got the point in that you don't have to see the monster to know he's there and to be scared. The problem was I just wasn't scared. Some of the dialogue is just bizarre. So Sam has a 14 year old daughter, which is part of why he is so worried because she's the same age as the girl who was attacked in the first place. And they have some conversations that I can't imagine any parent teenager having with each other. Parents and their teenagers just don't talk like that. It's, it's a bit weird. And some of the sort of descriptions about her, I just felt were a little inappropriate at times. And I wasn't sure whether it was to try and say, well, you know, if Max Cady meets her, this is what he's going to be thinking and wanting to do. But actually, it just made me think no dad would look at their daughter and say that and think that. Generally, I just didn't enjoy this book. And yet I've seen the second adaptation of the film, as I said, and it's in its early 90s De Niro, so he is full on method acting, he is terrifying, he is, you know, you would not want to meet him in a well lit alleyway, let alone anywhere else. And I just didn't get that feeling while reading this book at all. And the ending is seriously disappointing it's just it's it's a really bad ending actually to be honest that when i finally got to the end of the book i just thought well, why have i just wasted my time and i i kind of came away thinking well at least i felt rubbish reading a crap book rather than feel rubbish and not be able to properly enjoy a good book that was how i came away from reading cape fear so they were the books that I read in March. Even though I am late, let me know what your favourite book was that you read in March. What are you planning on reading in April? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you next time.